We're up north, on the coast, by the sea. We're not a capital. We're not on the main road. Sometimes it rains for a week. Sometimes it snows. It's taken us 400 years to build our city, and we're still working on it. We don't make it easy on ourselves, but we think we're on to something good. Hi, my name is Magnus Halberg, and I am the event director at Gothenburg & Co, which is the destination company in Gothenburg, Sweden. With me today in uh, the studio, I have my colleague Philip. Hello, my name is Philip Eklund, and I'm a sustainability specialist. For six years in a row, uh, Gothenburg has been named the most sustainable destination by the Global Destinations Sustainability Movement. And since many, many years back, event has played a very important role for Gothenburg in our effort to position ourselves as one of the most sustainable destinations and to create actual change. Because as we all know, to keep doing business the old way is not the way for the future. We know that the ongoing uh, climate challenge uh, makes us do things or forces us to do things in a different way. We cannot go on in the same way as we have. Therefore, our brand new vision for Gothenburg is sustainable destination by 2030. This is what we aim for in our daily work. This is what we focus on when we go to work every day and everything we do is supposed to, to support this. Philip. Yeah, so what we're going to talk about today is, is about how we use the events as change makers and test beds in order to, to create a more sustainable city. Uh, and uh, we're going to start out today with, uh, with showing you a, a short movie uh, about our destination and how we use events. So, enjoy. Movie time. Thirty years ago, Gothenburg decided to become one of the best event cities in Europe. We decided to treat events as a unique resource and to give organizers all the support that they can possibly need. Today, we are a world leader in sustainable events and a first choice for organizers looking for a city where everything is close, where you get a warm welcome and where events are designed to leave a legacy. To us, your event is not important. It is vital. Gothenburg may not be the largest city in the world. Still, the cinema culture here is strong and we're one of the biggest film festivals in Europe. Every year we screen 450 films from 80 countries with an attendance of 160,000 people. In fact, we've grown too big to fit in just the cinemas, so we also use university buildings, the library, and even a shopping mall. We like to try new locations, and this summer we're moving into the Garden Society. Thanks to our volunteers, our collaboration with the city and all our partners, we keep on pushing the limits of what a film festival can be. Gothenburg is an event city. Our job is to help things run safely. To work close with event organizers comes naturally. Over the years we had events in all parts of the city. We had horse racing on the boulevard, 19 half marathons and 35,000 children from all over the world playing football in the heart of the city. Most things can be done and we're happy to be a part of it. Premium. 
As to show jumper, what it all boils down to is clearing 14 obstacles as fast as you can, without making any mistakes. It's all over in a minute, sometimes less. You need to be able to find your focus, count every step, and get rid of distractions. To be able to walk from the hotel to the arena, to have my horses just minutes away. All of that makes it easier to do what I'm here for, to be the fastest rider and to win. I'm a hockey player. I've been doing this for 20 years now. When I was a kid, my father used to take me and my brother to see Frölunda at Scandinavia. That's where it all started. Since then, I've been to the NHL and back. The fans in Gothenburg, there's nothing like them really. They had my back since day one, and you can tell there's a huge love for the sport. Every time there's a game, hockey, football, whatever, it's like the whole city turns up to cheer. This is home. So, Philip, in the film, our mayor talks about legacy and that every event is designed to leave a legacy. What does she mean with that? Legacy is, is kind of a complex word in, in terms of uh, events. However, I would say that balance is a, is a key word in terms of, of legacy. And, and I think we've known for, for quite a while that, uh, that events is actually good for the economy of the city. But what, what's important now in terms of a climate uh, crisis happening and ongoing, I think it's important to have balance in the legacy. And, and what we are working with right now, and which is very important, is to, to actually balance the cost and uh, the impact from the events. And what we are aiming for is to create as much value as possible without uh, the negative costs. So let me give you an example there. For example, uh, you have a great event giving an enormous amount of value and economy to the city. However, you serve uh, the Atlantic Cod and uh, as a negative uh, uh, impact from the event that the Cod gets fished out. That's not what we aim for here. So what we need to do is, is to actually see all those aspects of, of doing events and try to, uh, to get a great value uh, without the negative impact. And that's, I think that's all about uh, what events are all about uh, mm -hmm. in this case. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about challenges, which challenges has been the greatest one to address out of a sustainability uh, perspective? Uh, sustainability is, is such a, a broad word. I think, uh, I think legacy is uh, kind of, it puts the, the perfect word on it. And, and the challenge is to, to see sustainability out of a broad perspective. And I think in, in some terms, uh, in order to learn what sustainability is and what we need to do, uh, it's about seeing the whole picture. And for one, uh, to name one practical example, I would say that clean energy is something that we've been working on uh, a lot in Gothenburg and, and all premises and venues where we actually do events uh, is able to use clean energy and renewable uh, sources, which, which is amazing. Another thing that is quite challenging in in the city uh, festival kind of environment is, uh, is to work with the disposable free events. Uh, events, we know for a fact that it's, uh, it's a lot of trash, it's a lot of mm -hmm. waste. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you have that in the, in the city center, it's, uh, it's a lot of transportation and a lot of costs to it as well. So, so that would also be something that, uh, that's kind of a challenge, but mm -hmm. we've been uh, developing uh, projects uh, to solve that matter. But I would say setting goals uh, is one of the most important things to do here. Uh, yeah, in order to work I agree. Here. I agree. And you mentioned food. You mentioned the cod in the Atlantic that we love so much here on the West Coast in Sweden. Uh, and Gothenburg is a very uh, well-known uh, food and, uh, and uh, beverage destination. Uh, we have our seafood, of course, yeah. since we are located right on the sea or right on the coast. And we are also known more or less as the beer capital in Sweden. Yeah. 
Yeah, food is, is super interesting and something that uh, that's what every person meet once they come to an event. Mm -hmm. You see the food, and and uh, it also means that the, f the food carries a symbol uh, in itself. For example, if you if you only serve meat, for example, that that would tell you something about how you work with sustainability. So, so for sure, I, I think it's a, a very important perspective. And and to to mention uh, the local breweries, that's also a way to. Yeah, to, to let them into the events, that's also a way to, to get an image of the city and, and to show all the visitors, which is uh, our visitors and our uh, citizens, to show them that this is something that we like. So it's super important and we've been working on to, to put more local beverages and food on the, on the festivals. Mm -hmm. But it's also, I think, in, in, terms of, um, in terms of food, I think organic is one thing that is super important and, and in, in terms of uh, sea, sea uh, food, uh, MSC is, is of course an important uh, mark that, that kind of uh, makes sure that it's not uh, fished out, for example. Um, and local, uh, I think that's, that's something that you need to, to lift up even more. Uh, I think uh, in terms of transportation, for example, local is, is super important. Yeah, yeah. If you transport all the beers, for example, imported, which wasn't uh, unusual just up to for a few years ago, then it's a lot of transportation connected just to, to, uh, to, the, to the beer, for example. Mm -hmm. And I think another important uh, thing in terms of food uh, that you need to, uh, to handle is also the food waste. In, in international perspective, I think a third of all the food that gets uh, grown is, is actually thrown away. Yeah. So, so it's, it's super important also here to, to work actively to reduce the waste and also communicate about it. Because what we do with the events and the food is actually to, to inspire and communicate to our visitors uh, to act on, on whatever we do on the events back at home. So that's, I think... Uh, to, to connect to, uh, to what I spoke about uh, early on as a change maker, what mm -hmm. we do with the food on the event gets uh, something that inspires uh, people. That's true, that's true. And we also have, oh, here we have a picture of a city festival that is famous in Gothenburg called Way Out West. And they took some uh, quite dramatic decisions some years back. For sure. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about them? Uh, absolutely, and and I think uh, vegetarian. Uh, we didn't really connect to that uh, earlier, but I think uh, I think uh, using less meat uh, as a part of of the food, uh, the whole food industry is is super important, and that's something you you know uh, in an international perspective and and both local perspective. And uh, we've been working with uh, vegetarian for quite quite some time in a lot of events that we have. Uh, and you can v take uh, different approaches here. And I, I think there are a few interesting approaches. Uh, I would like to mention on, on one of our absolute biggest culture festivals, we've been working a lot with inspiring stuff connected to the vegetarian and also make sure that all the food vendors have vegetarian options, which is, uh, which is super important. Uh, so I think there we, we reached about 55 to 60 percent of vegetarian uh, as a whole. And it's also important to lift up the vegetarian because it's, it might not be a norm to eat vegetarian. So it's, it's important to actually make it look better. It's, uh, even there, it's, uh, it's about communication. Who, I mean, whoever uh, who don't really like a pizza margarita, for example, and you don't need to brand that as vegetarian, but it still uh, lowers the, the impact from the meat. But in terms of way out west, I think it's super important. What they did, uh, as you mentioned, was that they took uh, took away all their uh, the meat. So it's a totally vegetarian festival, uh, which kind of uh, made a lot of people react, both positive and negative. Uh, and and it's a it's a huge huge music festival with uh, with uh, up to thirty five thousand guests and I think uh, what they did uh, might seem radical but what they did was actually to to image themselves and mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the reasons why they're still relevant yeah. th because they show that there is another way of doing it and, I've, and people love it mm -hmm. even though some people think that okay I, I would like my meat I eat meat what they did was that while doing that they, they tried to change people's behavior and they made it as an uh, important discussion point and Whatever happened, uh, again, to the change maker thing, how much does people afterwards uh, discuss about the vegetarian and why they did it? And mm -hmm. that kind of um, starts a uh, movement, I yeah. think, is super important. So food and drinks is one important area that yep. we focus on together with our partners, yep. uh, like Way Out West. 
uh, switching from uh, from uh, a lot of meat products to less meat products, for instance, is one way. Yeah. But we have done other things as well when it comes to climate action. Yeah. Um, I know we have a list in the background here. Uh, uh, I would know that we have done things with staff uniforms. Yeah. Uh, cutlery uh, and all that. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Of course. I, I think climate action is, is still a very abstract uh, term for a lot of people, but, it, but it's actually it's all about lowering uh, the consumption of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I think lowering the transportation is just one very simple thing. And as, as I mentioned earlier, I think the, the energy is also something if you can drive uh, the whole uh, event with clean energy, I think that makes a lot because everyone knows that a food vendor, that deep frying stuff is a lot of energy and, and if that can be clean, it, it's important. But I think so, so I think one, one way is definitely to just buy less stuff. And I think in event, in terms of events, there are a lot of merch and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So that's mm -hmm. very good. But in terms of clothing, I think uh, the, we, we try to made, uh, make a, an example uh, to inspire other uh, actors. Uh, so, so let's take it from the beginning. We, we started with uh, just ordering clothes and the first thing I would say uh, with clothing, you, you should try to buy organic stuff and fair trade stuff, which is just an important uh, way of uh, kind of working with climate and, and environmental stuff. And, and the next step would, is, is definitely to take away dates, because if you have uh, the year on the, on the clothing, you need to throw them away and then order yeah. new, which is yeah. definitely also an economical uh, way of uh, thinking of it, uh, but I think what we did uh, is maybe <laughs> beyond the next step, uh, and uh, that was actually to uh, to to make a cooperation with a second-hand uh, uh, um, company that uh, sorted out old used uh, clothing and printed our logos on. So, so that was definitely no uh, no climate uh, impact at all. So I think that's very good. But I would like to mention also what what we've been working on a lot in Sweden is uh, the free tap water to all visitors. Uh, we've been having festivals with up to 1.5 million visitors, and in just just to uh, to offer them free uh, tap water is is super great uh, climate action because. It, it, you don't necessarily have to <laughs> to order water from a far distance, but but we all see in co uh, conferences having Fiji water and stuff like that, and just the the reason to to transport water wh the, where when you have uh, great water on the premises is is actually just something very easy to to do. So in practice, the visitors bring their own bottle yes. and they fill it from taps that we supply. That we supply and have the very visible in the, in yeah. the city. Yeah, exactly. No. exactly. Great. Little tips and yep. tricks how to yep. do things, uh, and I know that you uh, uh, that you wanna you wanna share with us some short tips uh, where to start of and course. Uh, how to move on. I think the the first thing that you that you need to to understand when you when you make an event is to to set up clear environmental and sustainability goals. I think that's the that has been the one driver uh, for us, uh, which is super important. And it, once you have the goals, it's very easy to evaluate and uh, and try to work and integrate them into into your business. So I think that's that's the first I would uh, like to mention. I think as a second uh, as a second thing, I, I would definitely say to to work in uh, climate goals. I think that climate, uh, or I know that climate is is as I said earlier, uh, kind of abstract. But it's starting to, to get easier and to, to align with Paris Agreement and to always lower. It's actually not that hard. It just decide to fly less, transport less, less meat. It's easy to, to set up a few. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, scientific, but you, those things you already know. And um, as a third tip, I would definitely say to integrate sustainability more into your DNA. Yeah. Make it as uh, like Way Out West. I think that's a perfect example where you actually see that as a driver, as an image uh, carrier and, mm -hmm. and make it fun. I think that's, that's important. And also in terms of e even there, I think Way Out is a perfect example. Be brave and, uh, yeah. and uh, be bold and, and uh, inspire and uh, let let bold ideas uh, become a part of your uh, your business as well. Uh, I think many uh, festivals and uh, and events are a bit nervous about it, but but I think uh, in terms of uh, of customer or, or visitor, uh, I think they will love it in the end. I think that's that's what we've been seeing for sure. 
Uh, and I think uh, maybe the last tip uh, is definitely to integrate this heavily in your communication. Keep communicating about it because that's, that raises awareness and, and, and again, see events as a change maker. And if you're going to see it as a change maker, the visitors is, is whoever you want to inspire and whoever you want to work with. Of course, also the, the participants and, and all of that. But, but I think uh, so uh, integrate everyone and communicate heavily about this. Uh, I think yeah. that's, that's the way to do it. And I think this list is great because as a manager, I see a lot of benefits from it. You need to anchor your philosophy, your uh, uh, policy within the whole company to start with. Um, you need to be bold or you need to dare. You need to try, try, try. Yeah. You will fail over and over again. And man, but, you, you, but you may fail nine times and the tenth time it's a big success. For sure. Yeah. And of course, you need to have fun. Sustainability is fun and changing the world to the better is fun. For sure. So every little step we can take together from this list uh, and make it reality is, of course, a step in the right direction. I agree, for sure. Thank you, Philip. Thank you very much. Always uh, nice to be able to inspire. Well done, sir. A lot of uh, useful trips and tricks from uh, Gothenburg. And thank you for listening. Uh, we hope that we have inspired you to do differently and to do better small steps every day towards a more sustainable uh, future. Um, in Gothenburg, we're not perfect. Uh, we haven't reached our goals yet, but we try every day and we fail every day. And perhaps that's one of the big takeaways. You have to try, try and try and finally you will succeed. And please take with you that sustainable actions is fun. It can be fun. And if you want to discuss it even further, please feel free to reach out and contact uh, Philip or myself. We would love more events. We would love more destinations that focus on sustainability. And we would love to share with you uh, <coughs> even more uh, tips and tricks. Stay safe and thank you. Mm -hmm.